Hey guys, Natalie Madison here again today from Artisan Cakes, continuing the discussion about airbrushes. Last time we discussed airbrushes and how to quick connect all of the hoses and get your airbrush actually attached to the compressor. And today I thought we would talk about the types of colorants that you can run through your cake and cookie airbrush. Now it's a good time for me to mention we're talking about edible materials only. So anything that runs through my airbrush for cake and cookies does not get acrylic for my canvases later on. No, no, no. So those are two completely separate airbrush guns. Doesn't mean you can't use the compressor. You just have to have a different airbrush gun. Let's talk about food colorings and what you can use and can't use. You definitely want to invest in food colorings that they, they say airbrush on them. So these are diluted liquid colorings, very liquid, intended for airbrushing. These colorants have been formulated for the perfect stream and vaporization as they go through your airbrush. The particle size makes for um, great application on cakes, cookies, uh, fondant, anything of that edible nature. Artisan Accents has been, they've done something genius and they produce gel color. Well, you would not normally put gel color through your airbrush, but they have created something called dilution solution, which works specifically with their airbrush colors to dilute this down to a consistency that will stream through your airbrush. You will have to play a little bit around with the consistencies. If it's too thick, it'll splatter. If it's too thin, it'll splat and spread. So you'll have to play a little bit with the amount of drops of dilution solution needed with each drop of actual gel color. I don't recommend dilution solution with other gel colors. You can certainly play around and experiment, but we know for sure it works with artisan accents. Everybody wants to use luster on their cakes and cookies, right? Everybody wants to try to put luster through their airbrush. You definitely want to, especially if you're new to this, you want to use a product that has the luster already formulated and emulsified into an airbrush consistency. Americolor has a fantastic product. We've been using these for years, but it has luster in it, but they're a very fine particle size in a liquid state. So you will see some sediment at the bottom and you shake it up until it's fully emulsified and then you're able to run this through your airbrush. Lux is another brand, same thing. You'll see right here, all of that luster is definitely hanging out at the bottom of the airbrush bottle. You will have to shake the heck out of it to get it fully dispersed through the liquid and then you are ready to run this through your airbrush. You can make a homemade liquid with a very fine luster dust if you can find it. Um, I do use our highlighter dust as an airbrush colorant and I just put it in with Everclear which has a really high alcohol content that way it disperses and evaporates really fast. If you try to create your own emulsion using lusters out on the market, there's a good chance they're going to clog up your airbrush. These pores are much larger. I know they look tiny, but they're much larger than what you would find in a standard airbrush solution. You can occasionally find super fine dusts out there, which can be turned into an airbrush color. And I like to use a, an Everclear or a high alcohol content solution to saturate it. You have to keep it well shaken to get those luster particles dispersed through the liquid. And if you are using it in your airbrush, be prepared to constantly have to stir it in your cup to keep those particles from sedimenting to the bottom and clogging your airbrush. Um, another method of making those particles move is to clog up the nozzle by just pinching it and then allowing the air to flow through. It basically backflows the air, recirculates what's in the cup allowing those particles to disperse a little bit and come back through. But be advised, if you are using luster dust and your own homemade version of airbrush color, you are probably going to get splats and clogs and you should be prepared for that. If you can't get it to run through your airbrush at all, then you've probably chosen an 
a luster material that's too large to work with your airbrush. I've only found one particle out there that works in my airbrush and that's our highlighter dust. And it's only because it's super fine. I can use the gold, but I can't use the silver because those particles are actually too large for my airbrush. So a quick breakdown of lusters. Choose one that's pre-formulated and has super fine material already built in. Follow the directions, shake well to get that fully emulsified throughout the liquid and then run that through your airbrush. When working with any airbrush color, of course, you will want to clean it out thoroughly before you store your airbrush for its next use. And then I have one recommendation of something never to use and that is white airbrush color. No matter what brand I've used, and I've tried them all, the white sediment, which is actually a titanium dioxide, it settles in the bottom of the cup so quickly that I cannot keep it emulsified. So the particles settle and they won't come through the nozzle, or when they do, they clog it up really fast. So save this for painting. Don't put it through your airbrush. Just a quick recap, the types of colors you can use are anything formulated for airbrush use. The dilution solution with artisan accent colors. So this dilutes their gel colors into an airbrush consistency or any of the sheens and lusters that are designed for airbrushes. And they're all going to say that. So don't use gels, don't use standard luster dusts, and don't try to put any glitter through your airbrush and stay away from pastes. That pretty much covers all things airbrush color.